your butt, not with your gut. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. It is I, your favorite garage driller, Sarah. It's really early and I haven't had any morning beverage yet, so I'm kind of weird. <laughs> anyway, for all you new folk, I'm gonna be working on my Project Forester Gump today. There's a link up above to a car view I did on him. Ooh, I'm fire. To get you caught up. Everyone else, uh, I need to show this Forester some love. So let's do it. I actually have some parts that I'm going to install on the Gump in this video. Uh, one of them is for looks and the other one is for performance. And at some point in time, hopefully my new camera will be arriving today. Gump is a happy gump. Now, da da da, purr in. Oh, that's cute. I'm a bit of a package nerd. That's a cute package. Stickers, a bottle opener, hardware. Oops. Da da da. Crisis successfully averted. The wind got crazy and I had my canopy over the MR2 to protect it from the sun. And when I went out there, I grabbed the leg just at the last second before the wind was gonna take the canopy and likely end up slamming it to the side of the MR2. That would've been bad. Anyway, this right here is a bag of nets, bolts, hardware, and spacers. And these are two Perrin rear end links. Because I have an OEM VA generation WRX STI rear sway bar on here right now, which is 20 millimeters, and it's significantly fatter and the factory sway bar that came on the Forester XT. But I still have the Forester XT end links, which is the weakest link. Get it? The weakest link. So I'm gonna loosen up these 14 mil bolts right here. The same with the 14 mil bolt up there and then pull out this rear end link and swap it out. Come on. Uh, come on. Oh, I almost got nut in my hair. I really wish I had a hair tie right now. All right, now hardware is out. Come out. I got it. I would say there's a tad difference in girth between these two. Slight problem. Uh, now that I have my factory ones out of the vehicle and I can actually visually compare them to the new ones, as you can see, there's a significant difference in height between these two end links. And these ones, now after further investigating, if you go on their website, it says it's for Foresters that are lowered two inches or more only. Because the Forester is essentially the same unibody as the Impreza, only lifted. So that's why those don't fit. And I'm putting this in a video because I want to show this as an example. This can happen sometimes. You can call me dumb if you want, but I'm human. Anyway, next part, yay! It doesn't smell like ass either. Despite Forrester Gump only having just over 40,000 miles on him, he developed this little rip on the side bolster. Got my technical data. It says to start out, before moving seats, raise the seating face. Okay. Now butts go up. It's going up, right? I have no idea. I can't see the viewfinder. Step two, remove the knob. All of you in the UK just laughed at that, right? We're hearing reports. Power and telemetry are nominal. There's one. Here's the other. All right, where are you, screws? Screws, where are you, screws? You know what? as the instructions make it seem. It's very uh, inaccessible, I guess you could say. Ta-da! Got it. I could do 
this without taking the seat out of the car, it's a little bit more involved than I thought. The tech data made it look fairly easy. <laughs> look what came in the mail just now. I'm so excited. I've been wanting to buy one of these for like the past six months. Some of you might not even notice the difference right now with this camera that I'm using, but my new one, trust me, when I start using it, you'll notice a huge difference. Plus that one has the capability of shooting in 4K and I'll be able to use my microphone again. So the audio will be a lot better. So I'm not even gonna open it right now though because I got work I gotta do. Remove the pad assembly. One bolt. Oh damn. <laughs> So the way this works is if you look right here alongside the bottom of the cushion, there's all these little plastic hooks that go along the bottom of the seat rail, like the metal frame of the seat. And these hold the cushion nice and tight to the foam. Okay, last step. These right here are called hog rings. They have nothing to do with pigs, and I need to snip them. Bye. Well, this is gonna be really hard to do. Ta-da! Victory. I got it off, and I set this up on display so you could see this is the foam underneath the seat, and this is the back of the fabric. So you can see it together. This is what makes up a car's interior. And really looking at the back of that, like I don't think this would be too terrible to make on a sewing machine. So maybe someday I can try to do my own upholstery in a car its interior. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Hello. <laughs> that was not creepy in any way, shape, or form. It's uh, two days later. I just finished uploading the Land Cruiser review, and if you didn't watch it, please check it out. I'm trying to do something totally different with car reviews compared to anything else you guys have ever seen here on YouTube. And then they also would take the venom and they'd use that for things too. Weapons. And uh, real quick, this is shot on my Canon EOS 70D. We're gonna switch over to my new camera, the EOS R real quick. And I want you guys to see if you can see a difference in the sound in the video. It's gonna be the same lens though. It's a 10 to 18 millimeter Canon EFS lens. Ready? Ta-da! This is now shot in 4K, 30 FPS on my new Canon EOS R, and I'm using my external microphone. So, yay. I'm not gonna use it for the rest of the video though, because I gotta learn how to use this thing. I still have no idea how it works. I guess it's kinda pointless to shoot that in 4K though, because I'm uploading this video in 1080p. Anyway, at least now I have the capability of doing it. I'm super excited. Now I gotta finish up the seat, because I'm getting on a plane in like 18 hours. <laughs> I'm gonna show you what I'm doing to reinstall the fabric back onto the seat cushion. There's a metal frame, a little like metal bar that goes through the foam. And then I'm using these pliers that are designed to be used with these guys right here, hog rings. And you stick them right inside the plier, kind of like so. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to align the two bars, the one on the fabric and the one on the foam side inside this area and then squeeze and then it locks it into place. So it creates a ring and it holds the fabric onto the foam and it keeps it nice and taut so you don't have wrinkles in your fabric. because I haven't packed yet and I skipped lunch just so I could get this done for you guys in this video. 
and have something for you to watch on Saturday, your girl put in some work. Lift with your butt, not with your gut. <laughs> I just made that up. disassemble it out of the car it was way easier but anyway it's ready to reinstall back in Forrester Gump and I'm really surprised at how well this came out especially for my first time ever doing it not too bad there's a little bit of wrinkles right here on the sides and it says in the instructions to take an iron over it Just sitting in the heat it'll be absolutely fine so I also noticed too when I was reinstalling the seat cushion on the back side in the mesh there's little loops by the metal rods and depending on where you put your hog ring it'll make the fabric taut in either direction but I just mirrored it up to how it was when I disassembled it so all right I gotta hurry up and pack so I can hop on a plane but by the time you're watching this I'm already back and getting back to work so I'll see you guys soon with another video bye